Welcome back. Spoiler review here on Max Talks Movies. Very excited that I'm today I'm going to be talking about for the next multiple weeks, season three of The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. It is back after a two-year long wait as we're going to get around uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight episodes this season. I cannot wait to talk about you guys for the next eight weeks of The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. Today's episode, Chapter 17, The Apostate. We're going to break down this episode in spoiler fashion. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and ring the bell. I do other TV show reviews, movie reviews, movie rankings, and a box office breakdown show. Please, and I'll also let you know my future videos at the end of this video. Please comment down below. What are your thoughts on Season 3, Chapter 17 of The Mandalorian? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Are we off to a good start? Are you just happy to be back with the man? Is this your type of Star Wars? Let me know in the comment section. Also, please like the video, guys. The thumbs up button down below. That takes support this channel. So as I said, I adore The Mandalorian. This and Andor, to me, really are peak Disney Star Wars. And while Andor might be the best constructed show, maybe the, maybe all of those things. I mean, when I, even when I was just watching this show, this really feels like Star Wars to me more than a lot of the things that Disney has done in its era. So um, I love this show. Again, more Pedro Pascal, the better. Uh, even though we don't, we don't see him, we currently hear his voice uh, being a part of the two biggest shows on TV right now, which is just crazy. Um, so let's break down this episode, which is F chapter 17, The Apostate. Um, we kick off the episode, which we I thought was originally like a flashback because the armorer is giving this kid a new helmet. And I was like, is this like, he kind of looks like Din as a kid. And it's obviously not because a huge monster comes out, which kind of breaks up the the nice opening scene. Uh, and all these Mandalorians are getting killed and they're struggling to fight this creature until Mando comes in with his new ship and, you know, the music hits, I had chills right away um, and kills this creature. Um, and then uh, when Mando lands, we kind of get the same beat by beat, sometimes even dialogue by dialogue um, that we got in episode, I think it was five of the Book of Boba Fett. Um, I guess they're basically like, if people didn't see that show, this is why Mando is in this situation so they kind of have the back and forth where once again she's like oh you're not the armor is like you're not a mandalorian anymore he's like i gotta go to um have to go um to you know to um mandalore um for you know to to you know be begging for my forgiveness basically in the depths of of mandalore um, so we literally get, it was literally shot for shot, sometimes dialogue by dialogue scene of that exchange that they had in episode five. So that part was kind of like, wow, they really must not think a lot of people watch the book of Boba Fett because they're basically doing the same exact scene. Um, so then we cut to Mandalo going back to Navarro with Grogu. Um, and this is where he meets uh, Grief again, played by once again, Carl Weathers who is now like kind of running Navarro and each season, the, the, you know, the, the planet's gotten so much better. The town has gotten so much better. And now that's such a nice peaceful place. Again, brief say is an independent place. We don't want any Republic or empire stuff here. Um, they have the statue of IG 11 from the first season of the Mandalorian with his parts intact as well. Um, but this is where we get a couple of really nice scenes. So, Grief and Mando go into, you know, Grief's office um, and they have a bit of a conversation. And basically the conversation is that Mando is, get, you know, is here for business, basically. Um, and Grief's like, what's the business for? And then Mando looks up at the statue and says, I'm here to get IG-11. I need a droid that I trust to get me through Mandalore. And um, I was like, oh my God, Taika Waititi obviously voices him. He's coming back. Here we go. He's going to voice IG-11. So and he's like, these are their parts, right? And Grief's like, there's no way you're building him back. So Mando puts him back like half together and and IG-11 goes back to his old programming where he was trying to kill the uh, Grogu in the first season. Um, so they have his memories off. So then they have to like uh, shoot it off, I think. Or I think a droid throws something on IG-11 which really, you know, makes it fall asleep, I guess. Uh and then Mando goes to the people of uh, Babu Frick from the Rise of Skywalker to help help him fix a hilarious scene. Uh, just the back and forth between, I don't think it's Babu Frick, but his people and Mando, that back and forth was hilarious. And then um, Grogu picking up <laughs> these aliens, it was hilarious. And Mando's like, oh, he's young. I, I really like that scene a lot. Um so basically, Mando needs to find a part for them to fix it. They're like, we can fix it. We just need this part. And Mando's like, I got you. I'll, I'll fix it. 
Um, and then, you know, Greece, like, there's a reason why they don't have it. And he's like, they can't find it. You can't find it. And Grano's like, I got this. So Mando goes off on the ship and he goes to a system, um, a Mandalorian system. And he finds this huge, um, actually, before we even go to the Mandalorian system, um, right before uh, Mando departs for, with grief, um, there's a bunch of bounty hunters that are trying to get into this school. I think this is where the bar was in the original season, in the first season. And Gree's like, this is my school. You can't you can't just walk in here and ask for a drink. And, he, and the bounty hunter's like, oh, well, I'm not leaving here until you get me a drink from there. Um, and the bounty hunters weren't wrong. They're basically like, um, you, you were sending out people to, people to murder people from this place and now you're just protecting it all these things they get into a stare down you know the big uh cowboy off scene western off scene grief obviously wins by shooting the guy's gun out of his hand and his other four buddies are about to kill them and mando kills the four buddies and he lets the other the main one run off and man is like we could have just killed him and grief said well now he'll tell people that this is a respected place can't really do anything here so when mando departs from navarro he gets caught up by like five or six different pirates that are going after him because of him killing those four people. Um, Mando, obviously, it felt like a very much Attack of the Clones scene with the meteor fight like they did with Obi-Wan and Jango in the second movie. And now you're getting it with another kind of asteroid battle with Mando and these pirates, which was, again, tons of fun. The ship, uh, I love Mando's original ship. It's great. But for me, I am having so much fun already with Mando in this ship. It's so fast. It's so clean. It's also very prequel um nostalgia wise that's why i was kind of enjoying that uh back and forth um so mando obviously escapes from these people there's a huge ship and like we gotta gotta kill you uh, if you just give up you'll survive and mando just goes into light speed and he goes to this mandalorian system and the big scene of the episode really is he goes to the a throne and by herself is a uh, Katie Sackoff once again as Bo Katan. Still crazy. I actually just rewatched all of Rebels for the third time uh, before watching this new season. Um, and one of my favorite Easter eggs of this episode is the Pergil that you see in the beginning of the episode. When Amanda's going through light speed to get to Navarro. Um, and the thing that Grogu sees and is astonished by is the Pergil from Star Wars Rebels. And I got so excited because. Um, again, the Pergo are almost, they have a couple really nice episodes in Rebels. They don't talk or anything, but um, they can travel through light speed. And that is kind of the last time we saw both Ezra Bridger and, um, you know, Admiral Thrawn in the season finale of Rebels. They get taken away in a ship by Pergil. Um, so I think that was a really great tease of, a, of, a, of creatures that we're going to see either in this season, but more likely the Ahsoka show, which is going to be basically a, new, a brand new season of Rebels. Um, which is the search for Thrawn and Ezra, uh, which is so exciting. So if you haven't watched Rebels, please go check out Rebels. Uh, and that Pergil scene was a great Easter egg. Um, as we get towards, as it's in the end of the episode, he goes to this throne, has a great conversation with Bo-Katan. Um, and, and basically all of Bo-Katan's people left her. She's on the throne, but she has no Darksaber. And this is a great contrast because Mando has the Darksaber, uh, but his people don't give a crap about the dark saber. And now Bo Katan needs the dark saber for her people to lead, and she can't lead them because she doesn't have the dark saber. And a guy who doesn't really want the dark saber has it's, it's a lot of great contrast going on. Um, and she said that all of her people became mercenaries, and she's kind of by herself. She's kind of given up on the whole Mandalore thing, uh, which is so sad because she gets she's royalty, Mandalorian royalty, uh, with her sister Satine. Um, unbelievable. So. Um, she was like, you lead them. He's like, I'm not here to lead them. I'm here to go to the depths of Mandalore and get back my forgiveness. Um, you know, we can help each other, all these things. And she's like, your cults have already fractured the Mandalorian culture even before the purge, not even before Mandalore was destroyed. Um, all of these things. And then Mando's uh, says, I'm going to be going. And then she's like, good luck. You're, you're very cocky about this. And Mando's like, I'll... I'll um, I'll see you around bo -Katana. and she'll says, I'll see you too. We end the episode with that, directed by Rick Famuyu, who is the longtime director of The Mandalorian. Um, he has directed six episodes. Um, I always like to be surprised uh, episode by episode for the most part. Um, 
and they don't really release it usually on IMDb beforehand. So Rick from you directing episode one here of season three. We're off to the races. I think this is a really good episode to get kick us back in gear. I was enjoying myself. It was a fun. I just this is Star Wars to me. So I was really enjoying it. Obviously, Man- Mando and Grogu were great. Grief is great. Seeing some old friends. There were some repeated beats, obviously, because they need to ma- catch everyone up who did not watch Book of Boba Fest. So for me, that kind of was disappointing that they kind of had to do that in this show. Um and I, the bounty hunters is very much same thing, but it definitely is setting up for a fascinating and great season of the Mandalorian. Uh, so I don't love this episode, but I think it's a great way to start off season three. So that's my thoughts on season three, episode one or chapter 17, the apostate of the Mandalorian. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell. Uh, because I'm doing now Mandalorian reviews every single Wednesday here on the channel, I'm moving my Bad Batch reviews, which usually were on Wednesdays, uh, to Thursdays. So um, tomorrow you'll get my episode 11 review of The Bad Batch, um, another Star Wars show, um, and also a Friday review of Creed 3. Uh, Monday, a new review of Last of Us. Tuesday, my new box office breakdown show. And the next week, we'll break down chapter 18 of The Mandalorian. Um as well, coming out later today is also a new movie review from Amazon Prime. Somebody I used to know. That review will also come out later today. So thanks for joining me on this review of The Mandalorian. This is the way.